Could ancient Australians have embarked on an epic journey across the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean to reach the shores of South America some 20,000 years ago? This intriguing theory seeks to explain the presence of Australasian and Denisovan genetic markers in ancient South American populations, such as those in Brazil, dating back over 10,000 years. To unravel this mystery, we must delve into the realms of archaeology, genetics, and paleoanthropology, piecing together evidence that spans continents and millennia. Tens of thousands of years ago, Australia was part of a massive landmass known as Sahul, a prehistoric continent that connected mainland Australia to Tasmania and Papua New Guinea. During the last ice age, sea levels were hundreds of feet lower than today, exposing vast coastal plains and inland lakes. One of the largest now lost landscapes was the northwest shelf of Sahul, recently reconstructed in extraordinary detail by researchers using sediment analysis, geoscientific modeling, and archaeological evidence. The other, even larger, was the Sunderland region, encompassing all of the Java Sea, Gulf of Thailand, and the Andaman Sea. Australasian ancestors lived throughout what is now Indonesia, Borneo, and the Philippines, in a now-drowned region known as Sunderland, so the Australasian signal could have come from Sahul or from Sunderland. This region is truly an Atlantis, and likely the missing piece of the human migration story. According to the team behind a 2024 study published in Nature Communications, this landscape could have supported a sprawling inland sea with a population of up to half a million people. It was a green, river-threaded world teeming with life and fresh water, but over millennia this fertile shelf drowned as global temperatures rose and polar ice sheets melted. The inundation was not a sudden catastrophe, but a slow-moving crisis, pushing hunter-gatherer populations farther inland, or outward to sea. What if these populations did not merely retreat? What if some of them took to the water and never returned? The biggest bombshell in favour of this theory comes not from a sunken Australian coastline, but from the tropical jungles of Brazil, where genetic studies have relieved up to 3% Australasian ancestry in fossils over 10,000 years old. Imagine a world 20,000 years ago, where vast ice sheets gripped the earth, sea levels lay far below today's shores, and ancient humans roamed landscapes now lost to time. What if, amidst this primordial drama, a band of Australians fleeing the drowning of their northwestern homeland embarked on an epic voyage across the Pacific to South America? Could this daring journey explain the mysterious threads of Australasian and Denisovan ancestry woven into the genetic tapestry of ancient South Americans, such as those in Brazil dating back over 10,000 years? Let's get one thing straight. The Aboriginal Australians and Papuans were capable of doing anything. The independently invented farming in the Papuan Highlands conquered a huge continent filled with ferocious beasts in only a few generations, moved as far south as Tasmania, and also occupied the Bismarck Islands and possibly even the Solomon Islands in ancient times. Early films recorded their craftsmanship, showing their advanced woodworking ability and boat-building skills. Even children were taught at a young age how to build seaworthy canoes. Recent discoveries, including genetic insights, paint a compelling picture of a forgotten migration, one sparked by a submerged continent and carried across an ocean by human resilience. Recent genetic studies have uncovered surprising links between ancient South American populations and indigenous groups from Australasia, including Aboriginal Australians and Papuans. This connection is particularly evident in certain indigenous tribes of the Amazon, such as the Surui and Karatiana, who exhibit genetic markers not typically found in other Native American groups. This distinctive genetic signature has been termed the Y signal, derived from the Tupi word Vipiquera, meaning ancestor. 10,000-year-old fossils from the Brazilian jungle site of Lagoa Santa also have this genetic admixture, so this was not a recent migration. By most estimates, it could take as little as 30 men and women to found a new population, so a few canoes would be plenty. The presence of this Australasian genetic component in South America raises highly compelling questions about prehistoric human migration patterns. 
Traditional models suggest that the Americas were populated by migrants crossing the Bering land bridge from Siberia into North America. However, the Australasian genetic influence detected in South America, but notably absent in North American indigenous populations, challenges this singular narrative and hints at alternative migratory routes or contacts. Our tale begins on Australia's northwest shelf, a sprawling region once teeming with life, but now entombed beneath the waves. As detailed in the study, this 390,000 square kilometre expanse, larger than modern New Zealand, linked the Kimberley and Western Arnhem Land for much of Australia's 65,000-year human history. It wasn't a desolate stretch. It boasted archipelagos, rivers, lakes, and a vast inland sea supporting perhaps half a million people. Stone axe technologies and rock art hinted at a vibrant culture, thriving in a land of plenty. But around 20,000 years ago, as the last glacial maximum waned, rising seas began their relentless march. Reports from Quaternary Science Reviews prove that this shelf featured a stable inland sea from 27,000 to 17,000 years ago, and a 2,000 square kilometre freshwater lake until 14,000 years ago, oases that drew settlers until the waters swallowed them. What became of these people as their world sank? Could the flooding have propelled them on a journey few dared to dream? The environmental upheaval was staggering. Between 14,500 and 14,100 years ago, sea levels surged 4 to 5 metres per century. But the process started earlier, around 20,000 years ago, as ice melted globally. For the inhabitants of the northwest shelf, this wasn't a sudden deluge, but a slow, inexorable loss. Villages abandoned, islands shrinking, a way of life erased. Faced with such a fate, might some have turned their gaze eastward beyond the horizon and set sail across the Pacific. The notion seems audacious, yet humans have long defied the odds. Aboriginal Australians arrived on their continent over 50,000 years ago by sea from Southeast Asia. Polynesians later mastered vast oceanic crossings. If these feats were possible, why not a trans-Pacific odyssey by Australians escaping a drowning land? One hypothesis posits that ancient Australasian populations undertook trans-Pacific voyages, navigating thousands of kilometres of open ocean to reach South America. While this notion may seem extraordinary, it's essential to recognise the seafaring capabilities of ancient peoples. Archaeological evidence indicates that humans reached Australia at least 65,000 years ago, necessitating sea crossings from Southeast Asia. This suggests a tradition of maritime navigation that could, theoretically, support longer oceanic journeys. And the people of islands between Papua and Australia are, in fact, some of the most accomplished seafarers in the world, with a unique clamshell-shaped sail. How might they have done it? the Northwest Shelf's archipelagos could have been their stepping stones, guiding them through the Torres Strait and into the open Pacific. Simple rafts or outrigger canoes, crafted from timber and reeds, might have carried them, propelled by winds and currents altered by Ice Age climates. Perhaps they followed migrating birds or star patterns, skills honed over generations. The journey would have been gruelling, weeks or months at sea, battling storms and starvation, but the alternative was oblivion. Driven by survival or the lure of new horizons, these ancient mariners could have landed on South America's western shores, forever altering the human story. This brings us to the genetic enigma at the heart of our theory. The Australasian and Denisovan ancestry in ancient South Americans. Studies of skeletons from Brazil, like those at Lapa do Santo dating over 10,000 years, reveal a surprising Australasian signal, DNA more akin to indigenous Australians and Melanesians than the Siberian roots of most Native Americans. Another recent study analysed ancient DNA from 92 South American individuals and 25 Australasian samples, including indigenous Australians. The findings confirm a subtle but persistent Australasian genetic contribution in some South American populations, predating known Polynesian contact by millennia. How did this DNA leap an ocean? The standard model, migration from Siberia via the Bering Land Bridge around 15,000 to 20,000 years ago, can't fully explain it. 
an earlier influx tied to Australia, offers a tantalizing solution. The Denisovan connection deepens the intrigue. These mysterious archaic humans, known from Siberian fossils, interbred with ancestors of modern Australians and Papuans, leaving a significant Denisovan legacy, up to 5% of their DNA. The genetic study notes that this ancestry is strongest in indigenous Australians from northern and eastern regions, areas once linked to the northwest shelf. If these people crossed the Pacific 20,000 years ago, they carried this Denisovan heritage with them. Upon reaching South America, they could have mingled with Siberian-derived groups, passing on both Australasian and Denisovan markers. The Brazilian remains over 10,000 years old might thus reflect this ancient fusion, a genetic echo of a lost migration. But does the archaeological record support such a leap? South America's oldest sites, like Monteverde in Chile at 14,500 years, post-date our proposed crossing. Could the Australians have arrived earlier, their traces submerged or undiscovered? The northwest shelf's fate suggests a pattern. Coastal dwellers adept at marine life might have settled South America's shores, only for rising seas to erase their camps. The genetic study hints at this, noting that the Australasian signal is strongest in South America's tropical regions, not the north, possibly indicating a southern landing or migration over time. Future finds, tools, bones or middens, might yet surface in Peru or Brazil, buried beneath jungle or sediment. Timing is key. The northwest shelf's gradual flooding, starting around 20,000 years ago, aligns with our hypothesis. As waters rose, communities had decades to adapt, perhaps to build boats and scout eastward, before the shelf's final submersion around 14,000 years ago. A departure at 20,000 years places them in South America before Monteverde, allowing their DNA to spread and blend over millennia. By 10,000 years ago, when the Brazilian skeletons were interred, this ancestry could have become a faint but detectable thread, as the nature study confirms. Picture their voyage. A small flotilla, perhaps fifty souls, launches from a shrinking island, rafts swaying on the swells. Weeks stretch into months as they drift across the Pacific, fishing for survival, collecting rainwater, clinging to hope. Storms test their resolve, but the stars guide them until they stagger ashore, perhaps in modern Ecuador or Peru, greeted by alien landscapes and, eventually, other humans. Here, they forge a new life, their genes mingling with those of earlier arrivals, their story fading into obscurity until modern science revives it. Yet questions linger. How did they navigate without compasses or maps? What pushed them onward? Desperation or daring? Why is their DNA more prominent in South America than North America? The study suggests their signal weakens northward, perhaps due to dilution or a southern route avoiding colder climes. Critics might scoff at the lack of direct evidence, no boats or campsites, yet submerged coastlines could hold the key, and genetics offers what artifacts cannot. The Australasian ancestry predates Polynesian voyages, pointing to a deeper, older crossing. Who were these pioneers? Speakers of proto-Australian languages, they sang of a homeland now underwater, wielding skills from a coastal culture. In South America, they adapted to jungles and highlands, their Denisovan roots a silent gift from distant forebears. The nature study underscores their uniqueness. Indigenous Australians diverged early from other populations, their DNA a distinct marker carried across the sea. Their journey hints at a connected ancient world, the Pacific a bridge rather than a wall. This theory reshapes the Australasian and Denisovan signals in South America as relics of a 20,000-year-old odyssey sparked by the northwest shelf's demise. The inland sea and fertile plains nurtured a people capable of defying nature's wrath. As waters rose, they didn't perish. They sailed, seeding new lands with their legacy. The Brazilian remains bear witness, their DNA whispering of a drowned continent and a fearless crossing. Skeptics argue that the Pacific Ocean is simply too vast, the journey too dangerous, the technology too primitive. But perhaps we are underestimating both the ancient environment and the adaptability of early humans. During the Ice Age, sea levels were lower and the Pacific was dotted with more islands, reefs and potential stopping points. 
Ancient voyagers may have island hopped from Sahul to New Guinea, through Melanesia, and eastward over generations. They may have followed fish migrations or riding seasonal currents like the South Equatorial Current, which flows from Australia towards South America. Survivors of island floods may have been swept farther east by storm or accident. Such events would be rare, but over thousands of years they need only happen a few times to leave a genetic mark. There is precedent for such oceanic contact, the sweet potato. A plant native to South America appears in Polynesia centuries before European contact with matching DNA and name roots. This shows that pre-Columbian Trans-Pacific contact was real, even if infrequent. Could the Australasian migration have been the first and most audacious of these crossings? The theory gains poetic strength when we consider that its roots lie in a land that no longer exists. The drowned plains of Sahul are a kind of prehistoric Atlantis, whose people lived on riverbanks now deep beneath the sea. As sea level rise reshaped their world, they may have pushed into unknown waters, carrying with them not only their genes, but their languages, myths and technologies. Archaeologists are now using detailed simulations of Sahul's terrain and river systems to identify where its first inhabitants lived and where their descendants may have set out on new journeys. These models show people moving inland and along rivers, but the coastlines, those ancient ports of departure, are now underwater. There may yet be fossils or tools buried in the seabed that could confirm this ancient diaspora. What secrets remain hidden? Could digs unearth their tools or genes refine their path? For now, this hypothesis challenges us to see human history anew, not as isolated dots, but as a web of courage and survival. What other tales lie beneath the waves waiting to redefine our past? Could it be that as the great inland sea of Sahul vanished, it gave birth to one of humanity's boldest migrations? Did desperate or curious seafarers strike out into the unknown, only to find new lands on the far side of the world? The pieces are beginning to fit, but the puzzle is far from complete. What we do know is this, ancient Australians were among the earliest maritime peoples, with a history shaped by rising tides and vanishing coastlines. Their descendants bear traces of Denisovan blood and a spirit of exploration. Their ancient homeland, now drowned, may have launched more than one journey of global significance. And perhaps buried beneath the jungles of Brazil or the sands of Australia's continental shelf, the final clues are waiting. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think in the comments.